again. This is the day the Lord has made. Paul is adjusting me so I'm not screaming. Wow. Um, we have some uh, incredible day together. For those who are worshiping with us, we're glad you're here this morning. You'll notice we have a, a large group of youth and adult leaders. We had a larger group. Some of them had to leave. But these are our people who participate in our 30-hour famine. 30-hour famine is a program that, um, it's a program where kids uh, come together and they, they um, participate in a fast for 30 hours. And in that time, raise money for those around the world who do not have enough food. As a part of the program, not only they fast, they go out and do service projects, and they have uh, educational games and lessons so they can learn about issues of poverty. This year, they also focus on refugee issues and they taught a little bit about what's it like to be a refugee. So it was a blessing for them to be together. They are doing a fabulous job. We have four churches represented this weekend. Uh, we have Union United Methodist Church in Boston. We have Lynn, Grace United Methodist Church in Lynn. We have Aldersgate United Methodist Church in North Reading. And we have Wilmington United Methodist Church. So what a blessing to have the four churches together, or serving together. <clears throat> and um, so I would like to first of all say that after the, uh, let me put it in context like I did the last service. The youth hadn't eaten for over 12 hours. After about 12 hours, your stomach starts rumbling and you get a little hungry. So Kim, being the uh, wonderful, compassionate pastor she is, when they're really good hungry, rolls out four tables with cookie dough on it. And then gives them rolling pins and cookie cutters. And these hungry kids roll out and make dozens and dozens of cookies. Then after they're made, they go into the oven and they're out there having their lessons and their games and that smell kind of permeates the room. And even after they're made, that kind of smell just hangs there of fresh cookies. Oh, fanning the smell toward them. And this is done and they made this sacrifice for you. In the coffee room after the service, they don't have the regular coffee hour, but they have bags of cookies. And you're welcome to take a bag and we ask you to leave a donation and the money that you give will um, go toward feeding children. The uh, since Women at the United Methodist Church has been hosting 30 Hour Famine, we have raised, between all the churches working together in this, over a hundred thousand dollars to raise hunger. Isn't that amazing? So that represents many years of many kids giving up their time and many leaders sacrificing and also represents all the money you have given because they don't give the money, they raise the money. You give the money. So you have done a wonderful job. Remember, one dollar will feed one child for one day. So if I'm good at my math, $100,000 will feed 100,000 children for one day. Or, this is harder math, $100,000 will feed one child for 100,000 days. Right? So, yeah, I'm good at the math. So you are doing a great thing. So if you'd like some cookies that the kids sacrificed to make, we would love you to have some of those. But please leave a donation. I want to see, is Kylie still here? Where are you, Kylie? Come on up again. Well, I call her Kylie. Kaylee, Kylie, Kaylee. I know her. She's a wonderful kid. Kaylee is um, not only a wonderful youth in youth group, but she's also a Girl Scout. And as part of her Girl Scouts, she is working toward her Silver Award. And her Silver Award, part of that is going to be the donation of canned foods here. And this is where you come in. If you will don't take food off this list, you each got one of these sheets, and donate food, you'll be helping those who are hungry and helping Kaylee for her silver award. Smile. Big time, you're trying to sell. You want to help. Who could say no to that face, right? You want to help her, so bring your stuff in for a silver award, right? All right, give them a thumbs up. 
All right. The artwork on our screen was done by one of our youth and uh, Sydney, and we give thanks for that. And the make this, the wheel spin was one, one of, by one of our college students, David. So we give thanks for that as well. And we ask blessings in that as we begin. Um, we have lots of opportunities to, uh, to feed people. St. Paul Soup Kitchen needs lots of donations. The sign up is right outside the sanctuary on the bulletin board after service. Please sign up to serve St. Paul's or to make food for it. That's not this week, but next week. And also beside it is a opportunity to help with Habitat for Humanity. Uh, we would love you to participate in that. You can sign up for more information on that right next to it. And um, speaking of food, and we are a, a food, uh, food church, um, on, May the, on March the 24th is our annual turkey dinner. And I know people are going to really enjoy the, the, uh, bro the turkey and the mashed potatoes and the stuffing and all that great stuff. So if you would like to get a ticket, does anyone here have a ticket for that? You see some people with tickets, hit them up and buy tickets for that before it's too late. This is a meal that goes quickly. So we would love that. If the kids come and try to buy them for you, you know they're just hungry right now. What a gift to be together. The prayers of the service were all written by the youth as they came back from their, from their, um, their uh, work projects. And the work projects are on posters around the room so you can get a chance after the service to look at those and see the great work they did. You will hear about those throughout the service as well. Now let us worship the God who loves us and creates us and calls us into community. Good morning, everyone. Today's call to worship is the, tw the 2018 Be Hungry Manifesto. God's word er, is clear that he cares for those in need and calls us to do the same. The world easily ignores the homeless and the hungry, and it's the children who suffer the most. But for 30 hours, we chose to come besides them with, God lo with God's love. That is why we learn about the challenges the children in poverty endure going without homes, without food, without justice. We're letting our hearts break, open to their struggles. In their flight, we recognize part of our own souls. We're just visitors to this earth, and it, and it cannot satisfy us. Our true home lies in God's kingdoms. Our fullness can only be found in Christ. There's more to life than this, and we ache for every day. That's what these 30 hours are about, proclaiming our citizenship, our citizenship in heaven. Thirst, relentless for justice, choosing to be hungry so the world can be hunger free. We go hungry so they won't go hungry. Lord, give us strength and compassion. Please rise as you're able for our hymns. 
sanctuary. Will you pray with me? Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for our many blessings and the ways you have provided for us. Please guide us to show one another dignity, like your son Jesus. We showed all people compassion, concern, and dignity, and we should do the same. For like Jesus once said, it is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but the sinners. Amen. If we could have the group that is doing the children's message and any children that are in our congregation right now, please come join us. Now, you're going to have to be a little bit more interactive with this one, so I suggest you address your questions to the community at large. So, uh, oh, excuse me. Does anyone play sports? Anyone? All right, that's good. Does anyone know what the Olympics are? Well, in sports, there are people who come in first and people who don't. But as long as you tried your hardest, it's OK. We went to a place that is kind of like a restaurant for people who don't have as much as we do. It was called Cor Unum. At first we didn't know what that meant. Does anyone know what it means? <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, we found out that it means one heart. They serve food to people whether or not they were there the first or the last. Because in the end, everyone's a winner. Whether you come first or last, you are all equal, which means we should all treat people with the same one heart. Please pray with me and repeat after me. Most gracious God, thank you for giving us the chance to help other people. Give us all one heart and one mind to help others. Amen. Could we now join this community and greet each other in the love and peace of Jesus Christ?
So today's scripture lesson is from Luke chapter 10, verses 25 through 37. Just then, a lawyer stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, what is written in the law? What do you read there? He answered, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, you have given the right answer. Do this and you will live. But wanting to justify himself, he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell into the hands of robbers who stripped him, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. Now by chance, a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, while traveling, came near him, and when he saw him, he was moved with pity. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, having poured oil and wine on them. Then he put on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper, and said, Take care of him, and when I come back, I will repay you whatever more you spend. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? He said, The one who showed him mercy, Jesus said to him, Go and do likewise. This is the word of our God for the people of God. We will share how we served as good neighbors yesterday. When you hear our stories, consider how you can leave here and serve as a good neighbor. I'm Caitlin from St. Malachy's. I'm Nancy from Grace United Methodist Church. 
I'm Maddie, and I go to this church, and yesterday we went to Emmaus. Emmaus is a shelter organization that owns a lot of property in Haverhill. They have a food pantry, a place for kids to go after school, and a support system for adults. They also have apartments for people who need support but want to live on their own. In the night shelters, like the one we went to, they feed at least 35 people who are usually families every night. We made lasagna, salad, shepherd's pie, and apple cake, which would be meals for a few days or a week. We also organized the food pantry and explored one of the buildings. This made us feel different because we realized that not everyone wants to do what we did, and not everyone wants to give back. It also made us hungry because the food we prepared looked really good, but we knew that it wasn't for us and it would help other people who needed it. We didn't get to meet anyone who stayed in the shelters, but we did get to meet Denise, who's the volunteer coordinator. She seemed very excited to see us and helped us to make the meals. She was, she was very appreciated in how quickly made, we made the meals. She helped us provide nutrition for the kids and help the parents provide for their kids. It will help the families remember that people want to help them. Go, Go and, and do, do likewise. likewise. Hi, I'm Amber. Yesterday I was with the Kindness Crew. In Kindness Crew, we bought, prepared, and delivered meals to senior citizens who have a hard time getting their own meals. Kindness Crew is very similar to Meals on Wheels in the way that we buy, prepare, and deliver all the meals ourselves. We prepared American chop suey with peas. To accompany this, we gave them milk, fruit, bread, and we made Rice Krispie treats and cookies for dessert. After we made this, we got to deliver them. We drove to nine houses and delivered 12 meals with flowers. We were given the opportunity to talk to some of them and hear their stories. One man we talked to told us about his wife and his house. He shares with us how he hasn't had this many visitors in several years. He was excited to have someone to talk to. We were good neighbors because we took time out of our days to hand deliver meals and spread joy in our community. We gave them someone to talk to, which is very important because people can get lonely if friends and family can't visit them. It was eye-opening to see how taking a few hours of our time can brighten someone else's day. Be a good neighbor and do likewise. I'm Callie and I go to this church. I'm Kaylee and I also go to this church. We went to the Ronald McDonald house and it's in Boston. Um, so it's a place where families can go and stay if their kids are in medical care in a, in a hospital. Oh God, okay. And uh, so it's an apartment building. And they have 11 apartments where uh, families can stay, and it's free. Yeah. They also have a common area with a kitchen full of groceries they can take and a play area for the kids and siblings. Volunteers provide a hot meal every day for the families and activities every day for the kids. Ronald McDonald House provides transportation from the house to the hospital. Hello, I'm Savannah from the North Reading Church. We made a meal for the families and sick kids. We made a taco casserole and an apple pie. We felt very special to cook and clean for them. We were thankful that we could help families. We are also thankful that we are healthy. Uh, hello, I'm Ashton from Aldersgate in North Reading. And as you know, today we're talking about being a good neighbor. And we were each good neighbors by helping the people staying at the Ronald McDonald House and making them a meal. Uh, we also provided them the comfort of knowing that other people care about them. A woman staying there came into the kitchen and told us her story. And as a result, we were good neighbors by listening to her story. Uh, not only were we good neighbors to the people staying there, but we were also good neighbors to the people working there. 
We made it easier for them by providing the people staying there with a meal, therefore they didn't have to cook. Go, Go and do, do likewise. likewise. Good morning, everybody. Yesterday, me and my group went to the Lazarus House. Um, it's a family shelter in Lawrence. We cleaned the basement and we also made some shepherd's pie for them. Uh, the, we helped the family and staff there. Some of the families are there due to displacement, disasters, and unemployment. And today, as we enter into prayer, we'd like to invite you to pray for the people in Lazarus House and people in the same situation. Let us pray. We are in the wilderness. We have lost our way. We cannot fix ourselves. We need God's intervention in our lives, and so do many others. And so we pray. Because people are still kept in poverty or slavery, some are in fear from abusers, terrorists, and oppressors. Some face addiction, and some are targeted for unjust treatment because of who they are. And so we pray. because we need courage and integrity from leaders in religious, political, economic, and social life, because we love and sometimes struggle with our families, friends, and neighbors, and because the lives of those who sustain and protect our lives as military, civilian workers, and first responders are full of challenge and conflict. And so we pray. Because there are people who need your healing power, and some who offer healing through their skills and presence. Because some have harmed us, and we have harmed others by our action or inaction. And so we pray.
during our prayer today, we're going to dedicate these blankets and the people that uh, not only provided the service of making them into blankets, but also the people that will receive them and the blessings that God can give them through these gifts. So I just wanted to show those. One more twirl. Go ahead. There we go. They feel better now. So do I. Okay. So as we go on to worship and praise God, let us remember these items and our pillows as we take part and give of our tithes and our offerings. we live in. We ask you to take these gifts and turn them into aid and support for those in need and your church around the world. We also ask, Lord, that you bless these blanket, blankets and pillows. If I could ask everyone to just touch a pillow that's close to you, and we'll ask God that he can continue to bless these gifts that we have given, that he has given to us, that they may in turn bless those who receive them. And with your love and the strength of Jesus Christ our Lord and the spirit of God that lives and reigns in us, accept these, move these, change the people that receive these. In your mighty name, amen.
as we gather this morning, what wonderful witness we have that the Holy Communion we're about to receive is not this church's communion. It's not Lynn Grace Church's communion. It's not uh, Boston Union Church's communion. It's not North Reading Aldergate's church communion. It is not the Methodist Church's. It is God's. And it is God's table. Therefore, all who seek to know God and yearn to know God's love are welcome at this table. From the youngest among us to the most senior among us, from the long-time Methodist to the no-time Methodist, everyone is welcome at this table today. All you need is a heart that yearns to know God's love. We'll be, because of the allergy season, we'll be using individual cups. So you'll be invited to come up by the youth, by the senior center aisle. You'll take the cup, you'll take the bread. After you take this break of the cup, you can put it in the pews, right in the racks right here at the altar rail and go if you need this special bread uh, that is dairy free and egg free and also gluten free that will be available in the scene in the center uh, aisle so that uh, the center station so that we can receive communion together The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. It is right to give our thanks and praise. So let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, God Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is the, my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering to us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit in us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and cup. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body, for we partake of the one loaf. The bread we break is a sharing of the body of Christ. The cup over which we give thanks is a sharing of the blood of Christ. I'd like to invite those who come helping serve to come forward at this time.
Let us pray. Jesus, thank you. You have fed us with yourself, intervening with your own blood and body to free us from every illusion of success and to show us the true way, the way of the cross. By the power of your Holy Spirit, keep us in your love and keep on intervening until we deny ourselves and take up the cross and constantly follow you. Amen. I invite you to rise as you're able for our final hymn. As we prepare to sing our final hymn, I have one request. As we break our fast this afternoon with our simple meal of rice and beans, I've been informed that we need a little extra assistance in the kitchen if you're able to join us. We would very much appreciate it. Thank you very much. As our service here draws to a close, now is the time to take our candle and go light our world. Like good Samaritans, we at Mission of Deeds, which was my mission project yesterday, moved furniture to provide for people who desperately needed our help. May the Spirit be, oh sorry, may the Spirit go be our step-by-step, step, so we may go and do likewise and go in peace. <laughs>